Phase one of our base is pretty much complete, so it is about time to start on phase two. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we worked on our major train outpost and added in just an insane amount of refineries, so we could get tons of water and tons of keytarium for our crystal oscillator project. And now that we have that, we have everything we need to actually make the crystal oscillators. Except for one thing. A designated spot in our base to put the processing facility. Because this area here we're gonna fill with even more refineries. And have like two floors of this. Then we're gonna have a warehousing floor right up here. Just beneath this section. And that means we need to have the crystal oscillators higher up in the base. In phase two. We're gonna be doing all of our major production lines. So we're gonna focus on building that today. But first, check it out! We changed back the textures! No more dandelion yellow. No more funky cubes. Everything is back to normal. Factory cart? It's been a while, friend. I guess you wanted to join in. That, that, okay. You do you. Uh, anyway, everything's pretty much back to normal, and they switched back to the old textures, which is good. Except they kept the limestone texture, thank goodness, because it's my favorite. And yeah, I can understand why they wanted to like change them before now. It definitely does look like a bit of a rocky mess. The old sulfur has like, doesn't have a lot of character, you know? Then the copper, keytarium, and the iron all look pretty similar, so I see where they're going with it. But yeah, it's cool they changed it back. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of feel bad. It's like, what if they had listened to me and they're like, Oh, Kim's bullied our artwork. Why you do this? Now we're gonna change it back. But no, it's a big community thing. They listen to their QA site, I think more than anything, really. So if you ever want the devs to hear your opinions about the game, definitely go to that. Well, that's not the only thing that's changed. I've been busy, busy, busy on the Twitch live streams. And you might notice that I've done some decorating. Because pretty much all the time, I'm standing at our perch in front of our storage room here, and I look out upon our glorious world, and I was really sick and tired of seeing all the floating platforms. Specifically on the right, with the trains. So, went ahead and I added in a bunch of new ones. So, it's not actually just floating in the sky anymore. However, they are quite simple, because I don't want them to lag out the game too much, but they do the job. And then, we had our roundabout at the front here, that I have converted into a mighty gate! So this is kind of like the entrance to our world. Or to the desert at least. And I've kind of tried to model it off of the Brandenburg Gate. So it has a bit of that aesthetic appeal. And generally speaking is pretty plain. I think it's all we really needed. And it provides a platform for this loop in here. And also I copied our beast's design with like the legs or fins or whatever. And I just added in a few of the Miller Piddles to them as well. Then of course I went off to the left and finished off building all the supports out this way, all the way out to over here. Because the train track, once it gets past here, will be hitting the ground and will be traveling on the dirt. That's not really going to be the focus today. Getting back to beasts though, I finally did something you guys were asking for for a very, very, very long time. But in our hypertube hub, I have labeled the hypertubes. Very basically, just with some basic colors. Like black means it's like probably oil processing, yellow is for the train system, white just goes to another place in our base, like that doesn't have a purpose. So this probably goes down to like our deck downstairs. Gray is to a processing floor, and then blue goes to a place that has to do with water. That's generally how I've been labeling things. And then for our mirror type or tube hub, I've kind of done the same. Except now we just have to remember this is outside the base. So this goes off to a processing area. This goes out to blue. Oh, this will go out to our water packaging station that's like way over by the desert beach. We set that up a while ago. This goes to the oil fields. And this blue one, this one actually goes up to the airport. So I guess it doesn't really match the theme. So let's go off and change that to white. There we go. Now we know that goes to the airport. And it's like white, like a cloud. Exactly. Perfect. And we're gonna stick with this uh, naming method for the foreseeable future. 
and see if it works out. If not, like if I keep forgetting where the hyper tubes go, or yeah, maybe when we get many, many more used, I'll switch over to using a mod that literally just has like signs. Oh, but while we have the color gun, people ask me this all the time, but whenever I place a wall down, it's immediately just uh, red. So, boop, it's already painted red. How does that happen? Well, you change the first color in the color picker here. This is the default color of the world. So say I switch this off to, I don't know, green. And you update the preset, boom. Everything is green. <laughs> Super Omega green. And all the future walls you put down will be green as well. And actually, super quick, I just want to fly for a second. Check this out. You know, green actually looks pretty cool. Huh. Let's try out blue. Oh, blue. Yeah, no. At least not that blue. Ooh, let's try yellow. Wow. My eyes are literally on fire. <gasps> Ooh, but what about a very nice magenta? Hmm? Yes, looking very posh. Ooh, or better yet, a dark purple. Yeah! Now it looks like the Twitch logo. Follow me on Twitch. Okay, but no, we're, we're keeping it to red. <laughs> That's kind of our jam here. I just want to show you how to do that since I get that question a lot. Also, you know what? We're running around doing a lot of random stuff today. So why don't we do something else that's a little random? Let's go ahead and buy a statue. Because I have a lot of places around. There they are. And I actually really want to put statues at. Like in our hypertube hubs here. On these pillars, I want to put like a bunch of hog statues, like the silver ones. And that'd look really cool if we had them all lined up in a row here. Or they'd look really cool on top of our gate here. But yeah, I've never bought one before, so it'd be cool to see what's going on with them. And also, how many tickets do we even have in the world now? What do we got? 106 plus 19. Alrighty. Well, let's just print some coupons. Thank you very much. We got 125. That should be a statue or two, right? Well, let's check what we can buy. Statues. <gasps> Doggo statue. The lizard doggo statue is a hundred coupons. We could get that so easily. But I don't know where I'd put it. But then the silver hog is 50. We need like five of those to, for our hyper tube hub. I'll put it up here. What's going on? Pretty good pioneering. Satisfactory pioneering statue. We haven't done a satisfactory job yet. Eh, that's true. We're not even producing supercomputers yet. Well, how about this then? You guys have been wanting me to get a lizard doggo. So let's go and get one. <laughs> let's get this statue. Ooh. Okay. So we just have it in our inventory and we just put it down, I assume? Yes? This thing better be freaking gigantic. It better be bigger than the player. Or I'm gonna be mad. Let's see. Just throw her down. What the heck is this? What is this, a statue for ants? Do you just put it in your inventory? Oh. Oh, you can have it in your hand and we can stare at a doggo butt. Fun. Oh, okay, now I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> We're playing with a statue for ants. Oh, that's great. Cool. I like that a lot. He's so cute. I kind of want to put him on top of our geed over there. Where else would we put him? I don't know. Can we change its direction? Oh yeah, easily! Ooh, actually, you know what we could do with this one? <gasps> Whoa, this is such a good idea! Okay, first off, these gotta go. This has been in the way forever. But I wanna make a... something of a balcony here. So what we can do is we just go and make a little bit of a ramp. And that way we have a little bit of a platform here. And then we'll just put the lizard doggo, like, right near the front of it. There we go, so now it's like the mantelpiece of our beast. How does that look? Better look amazing. You can totally see that 100%. Or maybe not. Maybe it's a little small. <laughs> maybe just a tiny, it's a bitty bit too small. Eh, no, you can kind of see it. Let me try and change up the design there. Maybe we can make it look a little bit more interesting. Okay, there we go. Instead of going up, we went down, and then we added in this cool little balcony and holders here. So you can definitely see the little lizard doggo guy. Just on top of there. It's still a little small though, eh? But at least the general design down there looks pretty dang good. And you can definitely see the lizard doggo better. 
once you fully zoom in. But you know what? Give me a second here. I'm pretty sure there's a bigger statues mod that could help us out. Okay, so snap back to reality, and here we are. I've downloaded a mod called Bigger Statues. So now, I guess when we put this down, it will be bigger. Yes? Nope. Okay, well, that's a bit of a shame. That's okay. This statue is still pretty good. Then we'll save up another 75 tickets so we can get another matching one right over there. And we have lizard doggos guarding our beautiful base. Ooh, how scenic. It's so freaking shiny. I love it. Big snap. Big pick. Cool. Well, got all that stuff out of the way now. So I guess we should actually start on our main project today. So this is going to be a super omega important project. In fact, phase two of the base will pretty much be the rest of our game here. Because all of our late game production, like crystal oscillators, computers, super computers, all the way up to turbo motors and the space elevator parts will all be up here. So we really have to plan it out for the future. And obviously number one, we're gonna have to keep our fuse box going all the way up too. So that's a loss of space. Number two is I want to have all of the items moving up and down internally. So what we've been doing up until now is we have item spines. So large conveyor lift towers outside of the base that bring stuff to and from where they need to go. But I want to do that again internally now. So with the fuse box, I want to have that go all the way back and we'll reserve this kind of space for moving items up and down and moving all around. And we might have to bring water up too, who knows, right? So maybe even pipes. But regardless, this amount of space will definitely be enough. And that means we have a little bit of space here for our actual factory. But that's okay, because the height map on this world is insane. Like I think if we use the area actions mod and we just put down like any four corners, so a uh, place remove corners, boom, 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 boom. The top of that is where the world stops. So yeah, there's a space elevator height, and then all the way up there is pretty much how high we can build. I, I think anyway, not 100% sure. But yeah, this kind of gives you an image of how tall this space is gonna get. It's gonna be a big boy. And also, we're gonna be stopping the patterns that we've been making down here. So there's not going to be this open gap right down the middle. We're not going to be doing the same pattern on every floor. Like every floor now is going to be its own like production. And going to be designed its own unique way. So aside from what I mentioned earlier, the item elevator space and the fuse box space, the rest is going to be up for grabs depending on what kind of project we're doing. And that allows us to be a lot more creative with things. But now that we have a basic plan, I'll fill in the walls, I'll fill in some floors, and we'll start to actually design our first floor. Oh my goodness now. All right, well, I have filled in the floor and whoo, I, I really, really underestimated how small this floor is. We do not have enough room. Like, not, not even close. Not even close. So what we're gonna be doing then is we're gonna be pushing these back quite a bit, like maybe to here even. Yeah, pro I, actually that's like pretty much perfect. Just so we have more factory floor to work with. Also, I think it's gonna look real strange if we have like too big of a gap in between this red wall and the next wall. Unless we do something to like transition this, but I'm not sure what. Maybe we could add in like a little ramp here, like viewing decks. Make it a little bit more interesting. We could have like a railing above. We could have that there. And yeah, just something like this. And then the uh, way up for us, and then have the railing on the other side. I don't know. There's a lot to play around with. But number one, for sure, we have to like cut down the size of the arcs. So that's gonna run into some issues then with our airport, just a little bit. But that's okay. We can make a little cubby in the building to make it all work out. Because like at the end of the day, we're not gonna make our airport a higher priority than the rest of our production for the rest of the game. <laughs> like we can make little exceptions for this. Well, I've been busy, 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 and we got something pretty cool going on here now. Looks pretty neat from the outset, has a little interior place, like the airport hangar. And yeah, works out pretty well. And then, the transition area is done as well. 
And you know, it looks pretty plain right now, but like it works. And that's all we're trying to do. We're gonna be adding on a lot more detail as we move on up and do other things. And mainly like mix up the wall design by adding in machines that like protrude through the walls. Because like further on down we have some hyper tubes and maybe like a couple belts along the walls, but there's nothing really like extreme. Well aside from like the bunker and maybe some certain areas, but generally speaking all of the belt work is handled by the spines back here. So yeah, out here we definitely have to build like outside the box quite a bit. And I mean that quite literally, like we will destroy huge sections of the wall. Probably not that huge, but like a big old chunk. And then we'll have machines that are like facing outward. So see, we had, I don't know, what could we build? Some assemblers, sure. We'd have assemblers just facing out. And then we could have like balconies outside that we could walk around, kind of see the machines from. And then the belts would go up to another floor and we'd kind of see this all from outside. At least portions of it, not like the whole shebang. We'd make this obviously look cool. This is like the general idea. So then we have a bunch of like cut out pieces and like decorated pieces that go all the way up and it's just like dotted all around. And it would be a lot different and I think it would add a lot to the base too. Anyway though, it would be cool if we could build like one of our full designs here. And I think we will, or at least we'll try. And we're gonna be doing something a little different. So you know how last time I calculated we needed about 4,000 Katerium to make Quickwire. Well, uh, as the comments pointed out, I completely forgot about the Fused Quickwire alternate recipe. <laughs> it's spelled wrong. It's Quickwire now. Wait, is it called that everywhere? No, just for, just for this one, it's Quickwire. Neat. Anyway, so this makes the same amount of Quickwire as the constructor version, where you just use Katerium. Except, you replace Katerium ingots with copper ingots. So you don't use as much Katerium, which is pretty much the rarest, or at least one of the rarest materials in the game. So this is pretty good, and we super want to use this. However, we need a lot of copper. An insane amount of copper. 2,300 copper, in fact. And guess what, as well. We just so happen to just have used literally all the copper in our bees on this massive copper sheet project. So we have literally zero. But you know what, things aren't all too bad. There's some pretty efficient ways to make copper. Like instead of just using a smelter, which would just run 30 copper ore to 30 copper ingots, we could use a refinery and do that whole big shebang, making pure copper ingots which turns 15 copper ore into 37.5. So it's more than doubling the ore. Again though, we use water and <laughs> we all know how fun that is. Luckily though, there's a third option. A third option that we're gonna be using with the foundry. Now this I didn't even really know about, but there's an alternate copper alloy alternate in the foundry and check this out it takes 50 copper ore and 25 iron ore and makes a hundred copper ingots per minute which is amazing not only because we double our copper ore but also just the big numbers here like 50 100 like this just means that we won't have to set up like hundreds of thousands of machines also we won't have to deal with water because we have to deal with our iron ore so this definitely isn't as efficient as the refinery method, because using iron instead of water is kind of eh. Uh. And also we don't get as many copper ingots out of our copper ore as the refinery method either. However, this is omega hyper convenient, because this is just the beast consumption rate. Guess what would happen if we overclock this bad boy? Well quite simply, we'd make this the most convenient alternate thing in the world, because we can set the production rate to 240 per minute. Just 200% here. Oh, wait, which is 240% here, whoops. And that means our inputs will be 120 copper ore per minute and 60 iron ore per minute, which are super convenient numbers to deal with. And then since we have 240 as the output, all we need are two foundries and we have a full 480 line of copper ingots to draw from. So like, how wicked is that? And that means, Mr. Factory Cart, TM, 
that we're only gonna have to bring up four 480 lines of copper ore, which is super, super duper simple. Well, four and a half actually, but still super, super simple. So let me run the numbers on this and we'll build our prototype system upstairs. Now you can go, Mr. Factory Cart, relax. What a goofball. Anyway though, I did a little bit of work here, got all the copper and the iron we needed upstairs, and now we have the foundries going. So we have all the copper ingots we need to make the quick wire. And this is kind of what I meant with like, making the outside of the walls more interesting. So now we have all of the foundries kind of facing outside. So when you're super, super far away, you can kind of see that there's something going on. Now we're obviously not gonna do like this kind of design all over the walls, but in certain areas, we're gonna add that in as like a detail. So when this tower ends up being like ridiculously high, like way into space, we see like little pockets of detail and we'll make them all a little bit different every time. So right here, we just have a few foundries and then maybe later on, we could do something with maybe manufacturers or something and we can get really creative with it. And then we could even like bring things out over this platform here so we could have phase two over phase one and we could do some pillars and we could just do so much more with it. This is kind of like a simple, simple, simple example. In all honesty, I just want to get all the copper dealt with because we had to go through some spicy belt work to get that moving and grooving. But it's all good now. And we'll be able to combine it in assemblers to make all the quick wire we need because we have just an oversupply of Caterium for now. However though, we're not actually going to be processing the quick wire today. I thought it would be more valuable if I got your guys' feedback first before continuing in this direction. Just to hear what you guys think, if you have any ideas, you can let me know in the comments and stuff like that. And then we can move on from there. Because if we're going through this plan for the rest of the Let's Play, I really want to be sure that our plan is really good. And you know, asking like a couple thousand people for their feedback seems like a pretty decent idea. So again, let me know in the comments. But then one last thing here. I was live streaming while working on this and I got an amazing comment about what to do with these statues and this is genius. But we're gonna name them. Since we're gonna have two doggo statues here and there, we're gonna call them Mio and Tuo. What a good idea! So Mio and Tuo will be with us always. Oh man, I'll be so cute. However though, that is gonna be all for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye